Okay. I'm back. It's been a little bit. Um, update on my life. Uh, I guess we're going to call this the second recovery update. Um, uh, for uh, healing from sexual abuse since my memories resurfaced. Um, oh boy. <laughs> I want to talk about how my abuse affects me and how that abuse affects lots of others um and how um it took my job it took my job i was fired yesterday and the reason i was fired is because they couldn't count on my attendance and productivity which is a symptom of complex post-traumatic stress disorder losing the cat scratching the post over there i don't know if you can hear it but losing um executive function uh uh not being able to work not being able to wash the dishes not being able to shower to brush your teeth um <sighs> difficult relationships so even like just i and so yeah the and obviously like my company needs somebody that can do the job and I haven't been able to do the job since remembering, since even starting to work with the trauma um, because my PTSD is flaring up so much. And this is not the first time this has happened, me not being able to work um, due to this. But the first time it happened, I didn't know because my memories weren't there. So I had no idea that I had a trauma and that I had have PTSD. Um, so that's super fun um and uh so that's an indirect result of uh direct direct yes direct result of my abuse or at least indirect in the sense that it's a result of the complex ptsd which is a result of the abuse so um yeah yeah so that's great. That's great. I barely even know what to say about that right now because I'm just, I feel so many things. I, do I think not working is best for me, best for me right now? Yes. Um, but I feel like I was not supported. Like my company knew what I was going, they didn't know that I was sexually abused, but they knew I was going through something heavy. I had disclosed to them my disability. And I had told, them, told him, like, you know, there was just times that, like, I couldn't work because I'm in a de depressive episode or my PTSD is flaring up too much and I can't function, like, even more than I already can't function. And, um, I was fired. Like, and I even, he knew that it was a depressive episode. He knew that I've had PTSD. And, uh, yeah. And I mean, I get it. They need somebody that can do the job, but that's just sucky like to be put in a position where like and now i don't know what i'm gonna do for money like i'm gonna apply for unemployment but like i don't know i feel like you can never count on that and i don't know if i'll be accepted for disability because mental health and disability is super hard it's super hard like it's not counted as a disability often and you I've just, it's, I've heard a lot of things about attorneys needing to be involved, but I have many diagnoses at this point. Um, and, uh, I'm gonna work on getting my psychiatrist to sign me off because he's been seeing it. He's been putting in his notes that my PTSD symptoms have not gotten better. They've just continually gotten worse since my memories came back. Um, so hopefully he will sign off on that. Um, because I just need to recover. I need to recover. And I feel like shit that I can't work. Because the other people that go through this work. And they're fine. They don't lose their jobs. They can function. And I'm over here not being able to. And I think because of society. The fact that I don't have a job right now. And I went through a period years ago where I couldn't work. I couldn't work for years. And every, you know, so many people were like, no, nah, that's ridiculous. Like, you can work. Like, nothing is physically wrong with you. Like, um, and it's just, it's taboo. People think that 
you know, people, if you're not working, then you're automatically, like, less worthy of a person, um, because you're not contributing to society, um, like, I'm really sorry that I'm existing, my existence isn't a contribution to society as it is, um, you know, oh, I'm sick, <laughs> that's no reason, um, don't let sickness get you down, <laughs> uh, and that's hard, that's hard to live with that, that's hard to live with that shame every day, um, and even back when I was working, like, knowing that my functioning was declining the whole time it's declining I'm feeling such shame and even guilt and what's worse is that it's not my guilt it's society's guilt it's society's shame that I am feeling because we grew up in this world that doesn't treat that seriously doesn't open up their hearts and their minds and admit and accept that they're, you know, that the world is changing and it's not always a bad thing and it, mental health is real and it is important. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, I live with a lot of shame. And then on top of that, being abused opens you up to shame automatically you feel it inside, um, whether it's anxiety, whether it's society's shame or your abuser's shame, um, you think it's yours, you think it's yours, and that's a hard thing, that's a hard thing to live with, especially when it's for multiple things, so, um, yeah, that's where I'm at, um, I'm still in a lot of denial, too. Like, I keep thinking I need another memory to resurface, so that way I can stop being in denial. Um, because when it comes to recovered memories, a lot of people will say that they're not real. False memory syndrome. Um, which was not actually backed, by the way. Um, our memories are not always correct, yes, but our brains are not going to make something like that up. Something like being sexually abused by a family member. That's not something that a child's brain or that my, in a, that anybody's brain just makes up. Um, if they're completely split from reality and there are literally no other signs at all. And believe me, there are many signs that someone is being sexually abused. Um, but when it comes to recovering memories and then putting pieces together and seeing, oh, okay, wow, I have been debilitated in this way and this way and this way all my life or for the past 10 years or, um, you know, for three years when the abuse was going on. Like, it's just... <sighs> Again... If this is uh, the only one of my videos that you're watching, um, I have noted in other videos that I just laugh because it's so ridiculous. Everything is so ridiculous. <laughs> like I just like, <laughs> I was sexually abused by a family member. Oh my God, that's, can't even fathom that. Like that's wow. Like, and so I am, I'm really in a lot of denial and that's making things hard because it's making me doubt reality. And a big part of that is the abuse. You were, I was groomed to doubt, to deny, to think, oh, well, it's not happening, or if it is happening, that I like it. Um, and so that's the abuse, the grooming runs really deep. And the denial is not mine. It happened. I'm working with my therapist on that. She wants me to work with the part of myself that can't accept. And I think part of it is because it's painful, because it is really hard, and I'm afraid. And part of it is my abuser's voice in my head. I still hear him. I hear him every day. And I'm sure he loves that. 
I don't want him to win. I, I, I feel like he keeps winning and I don't want that. And I've been admitting, I, I've been telling myself that I, I win because I'm here. I win because I'm alive. I win because I remember. I win because I know how to stand up for myself now. I win because I recognize that his shame is not my shame. I win by being alive. And nobody gets to take that away from me. And most importantly, he doesn't get to take that away from me. He can take my job. He can take my sanity. He can take my childhood. You know, he can, he can take my mind. He can take my emotions. He can take my body. But he cannot take that from me. He cannot take my self-love. He cannot take me knowing truly who I am and what is real because what I remembered is real. I was sexually abused. I was groomed. I, this is the first time I think I'm saying this here on YouTube and anywhere on social media that I was raped. more than once and not just by my childhood abuser but the childhood abuse to me in my case is the most important because those who were abused especially as children we didn't learn boundaries we didn't learn what was actually right and what was actually wrong which makes us more vulnerable to other abuse. I I wish that was in fact. Um but yeah, as a child, as a child I was raped, my family member. Can you even can you even comprehend that for non-survivors? Can you can you understand how deeply deeply that fucks someone up? Can you understand what the actual horror of that is as a family member, as someone you're supposed to be able to trust and expect to love you uh, in unconditionally without abuse? <laughs> you're supposed to be able to expect that from family as a child, especially. And uh, when they, when they breach that, and not only when they breach that just once, but when they breach that for years. I'm really ready for complex PTSD be to become a diagnosis in the DSM. It is written in the DSM as something that is not officially a diagnosis, but that it is widely known in the psychiatric and the psychological community that it is it that it is it's it is a disability and so it's in there as that in the in the in the dsm which means that it's on its way to officially becoming in the dsm and if you don't know what the dsm is it's the di uh DSM, the diagnostic statistical manual and it is like the the bible of the sh shitty bible in a way of um mental health conditions um for anything as far as sleep disorders anxiety bipolar ocd adhd um as far as schizophrenia um bpd is on the list too you know just um dissociative identity disorder so <sighs> really big important things and i wish that complex ptsd was official um, because that would be my diagnosis. I, it, it is my diagnosis, but legally, I guess, like, fully on paper, it's not allowed to be my diagnosis, which is awful, because that's what I have. That's what I have. I meet all of the criteria. And, I mean, obviously, I also meet all of the criteria for standard PTSD, um, um, but... 
complex PTSD. I'll probably talk about it so often, especially the more I learn about it. Um, in ways, it is definitely the more severe type of PTSD. It lasts longer. It's not, there is no end date. There is no cure. There's treatment. It is a lifelong thing. I'm so sorry, survivors that are watching this, to hear that. I'm so sorry because it's hard enough. It's hard enough as it is to think to yourself that this is a lifelong problem that you will have. It can be so, it can feel so hopeless. Especially because you'll constantly feel connected to your abuser or your abusers. You'll constantly be at risk for debilitation. And I, I don't want to say that to scare you guys off, to scare survivors off, to scare especially survivors that are not out yet. I want you guys to know that there is healing. I'm figuring it out. Um, I've already, there's already been healing from remembering. Obviously, I have a long way to go because <laughs> I cannot work. I cannot shower. I cannot do my dishes. I can only think about trauma. There is no, I, I use so many skills. I, I, I have employed so many skills and I have a giant book of them. And I'm still, I'm still doing it and it's exhausting, but I'm doing it and I'm doing it because I know that I deserve better. I deserve to feel like I am in charge of my own life and that my disease isn't, that he's not. Um, so there is recovery. I hear often about CPTSD recovery. It takes time unfortunately and my therapist keeps telling me that she keeps saying it takes time but like as I'm telling her that like weeks ago I'm like no I'm going to lose my job like I like I knew like I didn't officially know it was going to actually happen but I was like this is bad like I can't work like I'm I'm barely working like how do I get better to not lose my job and like as unfortunate as it is like much of her answer is unfortunately it's going to take time and so she's been helping me with providing me all the help that I can it's just that the thing is that this is big and you do need to know that as you're healing it's unfortunate as it is I wish that I could sit here and tell you that it's easy and that it'll happen right away and that you won't lose things I can't do that though because it's not true it's and it may be true for some a lot of cptsd survivors it is just the unfortunate truth it takes time and i've upped my medication <laughs> i've tried so many different tools to get me to pr be more productive or function i hate the word productive <laughs> Like, it's like, it, it just, it, it makes you a dollar. Like, can we use the word functioning, functioning? Like, at least in terms of like people that have this disorder or are sick. Um, I am sick, this disorder is. Other survivors may not feel like their disorder is a sickness and I applaud you. If that makes you happy, it, to me, I have to accept it. I have to accept it and even still I'm struggling. So, yes, so, and for non-survivors, that's, this is this shit that we deal with. We lose our jobs, we can't stay focused in school, we don't have steady relationships, we cannot keep healthy relationships, and we cannot get out of bad ones. We uh, struggle with spending money, we struggle with our emotions, and not only feeling them really big, but figuring out how to deal with them and sometimes you feel them and you don't even know how to feel them so you just sit there in misery and i mean don't get me wrong 
when you're skillfully feeling your feelings, it still hurts. Um, but if you don't, it's going to keep coming back. And so, not the point, not the point. Um, so things like this, you know, just not really knowing who you are, never right, being able to find a self-identity. Um, so these are all things. It's not easy. We're not just being traumatic or tra we're not being dramatic. We're not wanting attention. We're not being lazy. We're not taking the easy way out. And so I, and unfortunately there are so many people out there that just won't get that. I wish that we could just <laughs> shake them and put sense into them, but we can't. Um, and that's something that I have to learn how to deal with, live with. Um, it's hard. So anyways, I guess I wanted to put that out there, provide a little bit of an update on my life and my healing. There are silver linings. I don't want to sit here and say, but also the bad parts are important. Like maybe I'll post a video about all the good things that come from healing your trauma and, and, and getting the really toxic people out of your life. Um, and the toxic things like <laughs> some in some way i feel like this was actually the universe pushing me along but i don't know so i guess that's about it um i will i'm gonna put together a list of the good things that come out of this because i want survivors to know if there's goodness there's not only just pain you can get out, you can get help. Um, you can be safe, you need, you have to allow people to help you. And I understand you have to stay in the abuse to survive. I want you to know that you can make it, you, we can find a way. No matter how hopeless it seems and because I felt that, I, and part of the, the diagnosis that is going to become the diagnosis of CPTSD is, um, oh my God, I'm losing my thought. You know, I'm dissociating a little bit less on these videos though, so that's good, right? Um, 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 yes, part of the diagnosis, what will become the diagnosis is the trauma. It happened repeatedly over it however long span of years yes um and also specifically is that you felt that you couldn't get out that there was no escape for whatever reason it couldn't happen and um that's the hardest thing in the world so i get that even now my chest is tightening i can't i'm struggling to breathe not being able to get out is like feeling like like he's leaning down on you and puts his arm over your collarbone and you can't move and you can't breathe and everything goes black that's yeah that's what just the whole thing of not being able to get out feels like constantly so i'm really really sorry if that's still happening to you um i don't have any resources right now there is a helpline um from rain it is the Rape, Abuse, Incest, National something. Um, uh, so I don't know if incest counts for you, but that's my situation. So that's the help that I'm thinking of right now. Not only do they have statistics, but they have a line. And I'd have to double check, so don't take this with a grain of salt. But I'm pretty sure if, if you're not safe, that they will help. Um, I encourage you... I, I want to look into it more, especially if I'm going to keep doing these, because I, one thing that I've learned since I posted this the first time is that a lot of you need this, and that makes me sick to my stomach, that it's that bad. What I am grateful for is that maybe I can help. Um, posting helps me. 
I have a big desire, I have a big wish that it helps someone, even just one person. And that's partly why I do it. It is, it's partly for me and it's partly just for that one person that is going to feel a little lighter after reading this, that's going to feel a little bit of hope, that's going to feel fired up and like maybe they can stand up to either their abuser or enablers or people that are you know, bullying you and just putting you down. Um, so one person, I hope you're out there. We deserve better than this. Thanks for letting me spread awareness and uh, for watching my life updates. So. <laughs>